What is up, everybody? I am Baron Baptiste. Welcome to Disrupting the Drift. Now is the time to wake up, to awaken within yourself, in the world. It's important, I say, to be awake, wake up, get present to yourself, to your life, get present to your own thoughts, what's going on with you, actually wake up. And that's what we're up to here is this is a place where we can tell the truth and the truth can be told. So, David Masters, how you doing? Fantastic. Great to be here with you, Baron. Yeah. Real quick, everyone, please uh, share the show. We grow through you sharing the show. We also love get, receiving your questions. You can send any questions into Disrupting the Drift at BaronBaptiste.com, Disrupting the Drift at BaronBaptiste.com. And David, we have a topic. You and I hit on something. It came out of a, an email I had received from someone. It wasn't quite a question, but it, I'll put it as a question. But someone was saying that they they listen to our show, they, the show here. They were saying that they are stuck in negative energy, and they're like they live in their heads. They live in this person was saying that she lives in her head. She's dealing with just emotions thoughts that are negative and can't seem to shake it. And so I thought, this is my twist on it. She was just saying she appreciates the show and she was just acknowledging how the show has been helping her and she still feels stuck. It's who the end of her email. She says, I still feel stuck in negative energy. And, and it occurred to me, I know in my life, there have been plenty of times where I have been in a similar kind of situation where it, I'm dealing with just waking up in the morning and feeling for no reason in the background, there's just this kind of, it's not even a thought. It's more of like a feeling, but it's more than a feeling. It's almost like a context. It's just in the background that something is wrong. Something's wrong. Something's missing. And then the thoughts emerge from that context. The thoughts emerge from that background or that underground, that underworld. Thoughts and thoughts of worry, thoughts of angst, thoughts of despair, what, 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 just the stuff of that world, right? And, and then it manifests as feelings, physical sensations. It manifests as, I don't even want to get into action uh, in my life or do the things I need to do in my life. It, it'd be easier to just shrink back. And I've something I've learned is when I have that kind of negative energy, it's possible to harness it, to actually harness that energy. So I can spend time trying to get rid of it. I can spend, try to, what's that saying? I think it's a, an AA kind of saying that your best thinking has gotten you where you are. And it's going to take something greater to get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And there's something about, I've learned to harness that energy, use it as fuel to actually move forward. And then as I'm aiming high and aiming for and doing the things that I know to do that are life affirming, things that are following that higher calling, that other kind of quiet, still, small voice, the calling of my conscience. It, it, as I follow that, even though there's all this other negative energy, negative vibes in the background, I use that as fuel to move into an upward trajectory, so to speak. And then it converts. I use that. I harness that negativity and convert it into fuel and then that energy actually dissipates. And I can look back at, in the, oh, oh yeah, this morning I woke up with all this negative energy and now it's like middle of the day and I'm inspired, I'm lit up, um, being productive, I'm moving the needle on things I want to move into. And I think we should talk about that a little bit. What do you see about that? Like actually the idea of harnessing negative energy using it rather than waiting around for it to disappear or fighting it in the battlefield, my mind getting the baseball bat out and trying to have that darkness, that dark energy disappear 
by beating it out, getting rid of it, or again, waiting around for it to disappear. How about harnessing it? What do you see about that? The first concept of harnessing that is a sail, a sailboat. Thousands of years, the wind can either blow you down or it can blow you forward. So it depends on how you look at it. And I think, you know, if we, if we go into the realm of what energy, negative energy really is, let's talk about worry for one thing, because worry is, I think what you're talking about is like, oh my gosh, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But let's look at what worry is as a form of negative energy. It is a belief in a negative outcome. That's what worry really boils down to. It's a negative possibility. The and possibility Aristotle, for something yeah. negative, bad, Aristotle, coming your way. Yeah. yeah. The philosopher Aristotle said the energy of the mind is the essence of life. And so I've discovered a, a, a phrase which I believe has changed many things for me, mm -hmm. and that is detect it and deflect it. Now, if you look at a sail, the sail de 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 deflects the wind in such a way as that it moves the boat forward. If you can detect it, you're already moving in the right direction. You're able to see it. You're able to recognize what it is that it is coming at you. And then you're able to make different assessments of what it is that is going on in your mind. And a lot of times, here's the problem. The brain is a thought machine. It's just a machine. It just turns it out. And the substance of our daily life is what is the fuel for the, the brain, the, the thought machine. Now, the question is how much of that's in our head is viable and how much of it is what we would call flotsam and jetsam, the leftover bits and pieces and conversations or the, the way that you look at yourself even when you, let's say you do something and it's not what you wanted it to be or expected it to be or somehow other people looked at it sideways and didn't get what you were doing. There's a lot of different facets of what comes at you all the time. And there's a way, and this is an interesting quote. He, it's, this is from Michael Jackson, the singer. He says, no matter who's around you being negative or thrusting negative energy at you, totally block it off. Because whatever you believe, you become. You see, this is the problem, though, of even I personally, I don't entertain negative things. And one of the one of the people look at me and go, what? I say to them when they come with at me with negative stuff, I just say, I don't care. In other words, the negative wants you to care about the negative. And personally, I don't have room for it. Hit my calendar. I don't want the net. So, what is it? Does it mean you have to deal with an employee and somebody who's done something you have to confront? No, I do care about that. But the negative part of it is separate from the actual actions of people. You can separate the two, they're mutually ex exclusive. The energy that they use in order to affect the world that they live in ha can be actually separated from their actions. And you can look at them separately. And that way, this is what the scripture says, judge not. When we get involved in the process of judging what's negative, including what's in ourselves, then we're slipping over into an entirely different plane. Because it's not really something that we should be judging. The, the negative, the, the evil of the world, the bad things that people do, the bad things that we do, we shouldn't be judging it. We should be observing it. We should be watching it. We should be become aware of it so that we can detect it in order to deflect it. And by detecting it, that becomes the wind in your sail to move forward. Let's say, just for the sake of this conversation, the wind in a sail moves you from one place to another. It moves you out of the place where you started and into a new realm of possibility. So I, I'll just throw it back to you on that one. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Very good. Le the <clears throat> you know, thing that comes to mind as you're speaking is judgment. It, it's, if you judge even that those negative feelings, negative thoughts, if you go, if you interact with them, you and you go into that other pl that plane, that world, let's say, and you f attempt to fight off the darkness through judgment, that's a kind of resistance, right? And 
resist, what's that saying? What you resist persists. Was that yes, Carl Jung that, said? What you right. resist persists and it's actually bolstered. It's empowered. And I think that there's something about words that come to mind right here. We're so subject to words. Like we talk about, okay, our thinking or better than just our, th there's thinking, right? And then there's what I like to call thoughting where we're just bombarded with random thoughts. And if you are fused to words, thoughts, and you have no ability to separate from them, then those words are very real. And they then in your reaction and in your resisting, your resistance to those words, you, you bolster them. And, and suddenly you're engaging with something. But again, here we come to the idea of meditation where you get still you get present, you press pause on the, the thoughts, you drop in to your body, you bring your attention into the physical universe. There's a, you, you shift planes, you shift realms, you shift worlds. And you have from that world, this world of pre the present, you're, there's a greater presence. And in that greater presence, you have a the ability to see words and let words go. So now you don't even, it's that you like to say you don't have words. You haven't said it exactly, but you, they have you. Yeah. But if you don't even, you don't even have to have them. You just let them come up, let them go. But I think the sensitivity to words and reaction to words in your own head to the degree that you're fused to words in your own head, so to speak, you're fused to the words of others. You're fused to the words of the world and manipulators. If you look at the media and just the constant bombardment of negativity or division or vitriol, propaganda, all this division and separation uh, of races, what color you are, what your economic, what is it, economic status, your gender, your, all these different things are, if you're sensitive and you're fused to words in your own being, in your own mind, you are sensitive to the words coming from the outside. But the, here's the deal. You believe into it. And then suddenly you take on others thinking that's not your own. So if you're taking in bad news all of the time or you're surrounded with negative people that are coming from negative, a negative dark place, evil place, whatever you want to call it, and you're sensitive to all that, well, because you're sensitive to it in your own mind, you don't have mastery of your own mind. You don't have control of your own mind. You're the random thoughts. What if you let go of words? You start seeing the, the words in your own head and the words of others are just words and you let them come up, you let them go. I say in that space, this place of being present, you have the ability to see alternative pathways. You don't buy into it all. You don't believe into it all. Like a, a you're not duped and manipulated by it. It, it, you stand independent in a sense, inner dependent things for yourself, including the world within your own mind. Yeah. And, and, and one other thing I'll say about this is you hear a lot of people, there's this whole kind of philosophy of, oh yeah, you've got all this resentment and anger. You have a, people have done you wrong. Okay. Wear that chip on your shoulder, wear that chip on your shoulder and use that as fuel to prove to people, get successful. D build status to prove them wrong. Wear that chip on your shoulder. I don't think that's, I, I think that's a, that's an empty package that just brings you full circle to the place you started with. <laughs> you don't get over it. I think what we're talking about here is actually getting over it within yourself, not letting it own you. But here's the thing. Can you use it? to harness it in such a way that it's, I'll give an example for me, it's if I'm in a place I've got, okay, these negative thoughts, worry, whatever it, it's, I'm just present to, okay, I don't want to stay in this. 
I don't want to live in this space. I don't want to live in this plane, negative plane. I am going to do things and take actions in the direction, do the things I know to do that will actually elevate me in the face of negativity. I'm going to be and do the things I know to do that line up to my true north, regardless of how I feel, regardless of the thoughts that are there in the background. I'm not buying into them. They may be there, but I'm using them in a way I don't want to keep standing in hell. What is it, Churchill, that said, if you're going through hell, keep going? Mm -hmm. Just keep going, right? That, to me, is a kind of harnessing of it in a sense. The philosopher, he's an Indonesian philosopher, not Han. He said this, there are many ways to calm a negative energy without suppressing or fighting it. Now, I want to, before I read the whole thing, I want to just touch on that. We are in a world of full of negative energies and negative people and negative circumstances. And now the dealing with it is the key to life in a sense because you don't have to either suppress it or fight it. There's a third place that you can be, and that is a neutral place. Just to give you an example, for many years, I had I have two brothers that were constantly fighting with each other over things that were pretty obviously negative. They, they were negative. They really resent each other and so on. And they always try to draw everybody else into each of their sides. And for me, I didn't care to take either of their sides. And so I stayed completely in that third, in the center, mm -hmm. stayed outside of their conflict. I could watch it. I heard their arguments. They went after each other with, with a passion, but it never actually drew me in. I wanted you, you to stay in your center. You stayed That's in right. your center, which That's allowed right. you to be in the center. Right. Rather and, pivoting to one side or the other and getting taking on yeah. someone else's beliefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the idea here is that if you there, there's a saying about raging against the storm, what is the point? of raging against a storm. A storm is what it is. And if you take those storms personally and you stand there and you yell at the storm, does that help you overcome it? I don't think it does. So do you cower to the storm? No, but then there's a place of reason where you go, okay, I'm not going to stand where the waves are breaking. I see these videos of people when the storm waves come in and they're breaking against the, the break wall and they're staying there. And then they're oblivious to the idea that a huge a wave is coming. They're Get on their away. phone. Oh, a Get tsunami it. is coming. I'm going to catch it on yeah. video. Get away from the break <laughs> wall. Uh, move back. What, what, do you think you're impervious? Yeah. Move back. But at the same time, see, I'm talking about either suppressing or fighting. You don't have to do either. You can actually mm -hmm. stay in your center. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the second part of this. So he goes on. He, so there are many ways to calm a negative energy without suppressing or fighting it. You recognize it. You smile at it, and you invite something nicer to come up and replace it. You read some inspiring words. You listen to a piece of beautiful music. You go somewhere mm -hmm. in nature or somewhere mm -hmm. where you can get quiet, and you either do walking meditation or sitting meditation. Mm -hmm. Wait, who's See, saying that? This is not Han, an oh, yeah. Indonesian philosopher. Yeah. And that those are the truest words. That, because, see, there are ways mm -hmm. when my children were little, when they were – caught up in a tantrum and children don't even know why they're upset. What I would do, and, and it's not a distraction, it's a redirection. I would say, oh, look at that over there. And as soon as I did that, it would break their, I don't know what it was, the spiral that they were in, in going deeper and deeper into being frustrated. But you can literally do that with yourself. However, you don't have to look outside you can look inside. You can get quiet. And as the scripture says, be still and know. And so the question is, what is it that I am to know about this? And then you wait for the answer. You don't go about reorganizing your own life. You ask the higher power to intervene. Because he, and even Jesus said, of myself, I can do nothing. It's mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Spirit that does these things through me. Why not become a vessel for doing good. Mm -hmm. And let me read to you a quote. Because, from, because in life, you, you can be a vehicle for good or for 
evil. We have yes, that power right, right. as human beings. We, we're powerful in a sense. Oh, but we have power, great power. Yes. Great power. And, but, but we are not the ultimate power. What is moving through us, what, where we're coming from, which world are we coming from? A world of bi- violence, resentment, malevolence, darkness, stomping on, squashing other people. Or are you coming from a place of love, now, a place of good, a place you, because as you elevate yeah. others, you elevate yourself in a sense. Yes. Where yes. you're coming from is what expands, good or evil. Yes. And, and we have say in that. There is choice at the heart of that. There, there is a great power within the choice to make between giving in and resisting. Now, resisting is the idea that when my wife and I went on our honeymoon, we went to the Inside Passage in Alaska, the G- Glacier Bay. And we had to go out in the open ocean for, I don't know, several hours. And the waves were huge, 30-foot waves. The boat was moving up and down, literally 30 to 40 to 50 feet. Where was this? This was on the way up to Glacier Bay, Alaska. Ah, okay. Okay, on, on a big cruise ship. And so she started getting sick. And I told her, here's the secret. Don't fight against it and don't give in. Where are you when you don't do those two things? If you fight against it, you use the energy of your will mm-hmm. to try to force something into existence that you don't actually have any power over. At the same time, if you give in and you succumb to it, then it controls you. So is there a neutral ground between everything? And yes, you know where the neutral ground is? The neutral ground is this, looking at things and turning it around and seeing from a place of gratitude. Because gratitude literally turns negative energy into positive energy. Mm. And there, there's no situation, either so small or so large, that it is not susceptible to gratitude's power. Think about that. That if instead of saying, God, I hate this situation. Oh, my God, help me. Instead of saying, thank you for this opportunity. It immediately turns the situation into a learning moment, a a possibility for overcoming. And when you grab onto those possibilities beyond being feeling oppressed, seasickness is a very interesting thing because it, it, you don't have seasickness. Seasickness has you and anybody that's experienced it knows that you just start to feel like you're going to throw up and you get dizzy and then your, your body wants to react violently. But when you get into that neutral space and what I, when I explained this to my wife, she actually understood it on the spot. Mm. And then we were able, and this is a metaphor of life. We were standing in line waiting for the smorgasbord, the, the big giant 150 foot long table of food that was waiting for us. It was like a midnight feast. And we yeah, were like, those cruise ships are ridiculous. The yeah, food they put there, in front of you. There were 750. Morning, afternoon, and night, and all day, and all the times in between, right? Yeah. <laughs> there were 750 passengers on the ship, and there was about 20 people that showed up at the door waiting for it to open for the midnight feast. We were in the front of that door, and we went in, and we just ate, and the ship was going up and down. It didn't rock us off of our centers. We were able to enjoy the feast without even noticing the the movement of the swells and the the shifting. I heard that as many as 500 people were throwing up in their cabins. We weren't those people because somehow we had gotten to that place by just observing the, not giving in, not Not resisting. Yeah. Just, just being in in the center of the battlefield of the mind. And the, mm -hmm. the word that comes to me is relax. Like you'd sum all that up into one of my favorite words <laughs> is relax. Yeah. yeah. Relax. Yeah. But one thing I learned over the years with the, my trainings, <clears throat> my leadership, yoga based trainings, people would come in and, and they would get, they'd have all this anger, uh, energy, anger about toward their physical limitations, their injuries, their, where they had cancer, they were dealing with some kind of heart condition or they're dealing with, headaches and different things. And in a, a, a big, a key lesson, one of the primary lessons after spending a week in a training with me that people would be left with is don't resist it. Don't resent it. 
And what happens if, so if you, let's say you have an injury, you're trying to do yoga poses or you're trying to do something physical, you're, you're just walking on the beach even. And, but when you just let it be and you let that resistance based energy of resisting the condition, being angry about the condition, when you let all that go, it's pretty phenomenal. It's actually, you enter a, a realm of the miraculous where suddenly the body relaxes and somehow you're, you, you plug in to a new life force and suddenly the body actually heals itself and sometimes instantaneously. Now the condition may not go away, but the pain goes away or the level of pain dissipates, lessens. The level of just the overall resistance in one's body is like it evaporates. And suddenly they're doing these movements, whether it's yoga poses or just physical movements or just how they're walking through their day and, and they're relaxed. And suddenly it, it's not owning them, dominating them, but that limitation actually is the access to a transformation in one's body. And it is through relaxing. And then suddenly you have energy to actually move more, do more, be more. And it's, but it's this resistance trap, this fighting. If you go into a dark room with a, a baseball bat and you start swinging to <laughs> fight off the darkness, you can exa you exhaust yourself. Does the darkness disappear? No. By the way, by but the all, way. The wait, all it takes is flick on the light switch mm -hmm. and darkness disappears. Yeah. You flick on the light and to relax, to drop in to your body, to draw, let your mind, your attention, your awareness trickle in, filter into your bones, into your body. And you just let all that other energy, that psychic energy, that mental energy, whatever that, that resistance is, you, something shifts. Something gets altered. What's possible is altered, but in a very real way. Yeah. And then you can apply that lesson you apply to the rest of your life, where now you're not resisting to accomplish things and fighting and using anger and the chip on your shoulder. You actually are flowing from a, a different flow, a different place, a different kind of energy, vitality, life force with the what they call prana, right? Yeah. Yes. It's real. And it's very real. Yeah. The word relax. I love looking at the uh, meanings of words. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to, to think about just how one word can change everything. Here's the, uh, it's an intransitive verb. It says to make lax or loose. In other words, relax one's grip. To make less severe or strict. How many people beat themselves up because they're not doing things that they think they should be or they're, they judge themselves for little things that they fail to do, whatever. The third one is to reduce in intensity, mm -hmm. relax one's efforts. See, through patience, possess ye your soul. That's in the scripture. How do you do that if you're constantly pushing? And, and then are you being driven by negative energy? Are you trying to overcome negative energy by virtue signaling, by showing everybody how great you are, how patient you are? Everything that you do as a reaction. Oh, this is the other one I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. If you are in a state of constant reaction, which, by the way, it nullifies relaxation. By, when you're in that state of reacting, you're not relaxing. But here's the other one. When you react, you lose your ability to free act. Yeah. Yeah. You lose your ability to free to be, free to act who you mm -hmm. want to be. Yeah. It's interesting because what happens in living in reactivity, living a reactive life is resistance. But what that defaults into is complacency, resignation, cynicism. And it just defaults. It's just the natural next kind of place you land in is, is then you're cynical, you're resigned, you're compromised. And then you try, you're functioning from a place of resignation and cynicism in your life. And, and that's just as a dark downward spiral into a shame spiral. The, the, the thing to consider is 
use that cynicism here, harness your cynicism to get cynical about your own cynicism rather than just aiming it outward toward others in forms of envy because you see other people thriving and being successful and doing well and you're not, you're resigned and cynical. So you want to pull people down. Well, start being, and that leads you, the person doing that, into a very dark place, a very empty, dark, isolated place within themselves. But to actually harness that cynicism, to get cynical about your own cynicism, to get and use that to doubt yourself, doubt that dark self, doubt the doubt, doubt the doubting self. And you doubt that doubting self. And then if what arises is awareness, yeah, like your so a self-awareness. And in that self-awareness, there's space to actually pivot in your life. Yeah. To actually yeah. act in new ways. And there's freedom, free, again, that free to be, free to act and do the things that will elevate you. Do the things that move energy. So it's not pushing because, yeah, social media, like you see all these influencers push, hustle, yeah. hard, hard. But it's actually not pushing. It's actually, you're being pushed. There's an energy behind you that's moving you. When you come out of cynicism, you have, you have creative flow. You have access to your creative self to higher, bigger thinking rather than reacting and resisting. Yes. And this is another component of that. The word relax, to reduce in intensity. Now think of people, you go to the gym, and I went to this gym for many years. Let's say I went to the gym for five years. And there were people that would show up there the same times that I would. They would go on the treadmill. They would do all the exercises. They would, I would usually go for an hour or two. And, but for five years, these people would show up, and nothing seemingly changed. The weight didn't fall off. There, there was something that I was trying to understand. Why do these people, they go to the gym... <laughs> And they, yes, they're healthier than they otherwise would have been. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed was there was an intensity about being there. And that intensity was, in my opinion, the intensity was what was driving them. In other words, instead of being there with a mindset of, okay, I'm going to come here because it's good for me. And they were there with an outcome-based thought about it. And the outcome-based thought was driving them, just like you were saying just now that there was a force behind the outcome-based thought that was driving them. And so when they were done, guess what they would do? They would go back, and because they had exercise, they felt that they could go back to their habits, their eating habits, and whatever. And this is the reason why they, they gave themselves a justification to remain. And, and what was it you just said? Whatever you resist persists. Mm -hmm. They gave themselves the perfect justification to remain in the state that they were in. And this is what people don't even, they don't even consider this. It's like a homeostasis of sorts. Yes, exactly. It justifies how they're living. So, okay, I'm going to the gym. I feel That's better right. about myself. Right. Now I can still go be a hoe, go be a slime ball, go be, go, or just stay on the treadmill of life. Nothing really changes. Yeah. And different than when you're showing up and you're actually causing some kind of new results. It's fresh, but you're bringing that into your life to clean up your life. And then you inherently come back to, was you're coming back to the gym over time, something you're training. And I think training isn't, what it comes down to me is intent. The intent of why we show up for things, even positive things. You're yeah. showing up to, yoga class, you're showing up to your Pilates class, you're showing up to the gym, you're, what's the intent there? Is it really to enhance your whole life or is it just to feel better in the moment, get some chemistry going, get, and again, it's good, it's, it's better than nothing, but it's not really accessing what's possible. Yeah, and it's I see in this like article. That, because yeah. it's not even about what you're doing, it's about 
someone who's growing all of the time and use training your body, training your mind to grow and yeah. to use that to be a productive, build your business, build your career, build uh, your family, build your life. And that's another aspect of like where we started in this conversation of harnessing negative energy, training, it, training your body. Look, that is never going to be a negative thing for someone. But then if you're also aware, part of training your body and mind and di bringing discipline is to allow yourself to live from that discipline in all ways to build yourself, whether it's financially or building business to be a contribution, to be, make a difference for people that elevates you. And the third thing I'll, I'll add here is brotherhood like having brothers or sisters, so to speak, people, the people in your life, and it doesn't need to be many, but people that, that are there and that they're going to be, tell you the truth, that they're about you being the best version of yourself, living true for you, and you're that person for them. But there's something about, okay, the people in your life, the this bigger view of life so it's not just showing up to the gym to manage your stress it's really you're up to something bigger than the self that walked into the gym that morning yeah or and i have to put up to that yoga class that day i have to finish with this note okay. i see this article and this is from the new york post just recently like a week ago it says exercise might not be the key to longevity according to new research in fact, too much moving around could even be accelerating the aging process in our bodies, Scandinavian scientists have revealed. And so it's really interesting to show you that even science validates this idea that when we are using this force of will, or when we are being pushed along by anxiety and worry and fear, and we have that negative wind in our, in, in our sail, that we, the energy itself that pushes us to the gym can potentially wear us out rather than rejuvenate us. Of course, you're better off exercising and doing something. But then when those people are the chronic exercisers, and we, I see a lot of them walking around in their exercise, after, in their exercise clothing after the gym. Some of them are, but you can also tell the energy of the person. And the energy of the person says a lot about why they're doing mm -hmm. the things that they do. So yeah, physical I just, culture. I just wanted to throw that it, in there. It's physical culture elevating the altitude of your attitude. Yeah, that's right. Is it, are you using physical culture practices and nutrition and as a way of elevating? And there's something to me about training your body that the, the discipline of it, there's the discipline, but you're cultivating discipline as an access to the rest of your life, your whole life. Yeah. From yourself to, yeah, family, your closer relationships, if you've got kids or out to your work and the groups of people you're involved with and teams and others out to society, community, out to the physical universe, humanity. Are you up to something bigger? No matter, and it's not about becoming a, a billionaire. We're not talking about that or becoming just successful, but there is a natural success. There is a natural success that when you bring discipline and whatever the success is defined as you, but we're not talking about just money, wealth, fame, like that status, but we're talking about who you are in your life for all of your life, for all areas of your life, your ways of living elevating different than just managing st the stress from living a life in wrong ways yeah debilitating My last thought. ways yeah last thought let's wrap up here what do you think of first thing in the morning that's the question the morning practice of meditation increases the yeah. ability to ward off negative energy yeah. and morning and evening meditate Learn how to get quiet for mm -hmm. maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. And you will see that your world will start to reorient itself without effort. That's all I yeah. want to say. Yeah, no, very good. I know waking up early, 
before the day, just even, yeah, 15 minutes, 10 minutes to 20, 30 minutes. And I just sit in a dark room, it's still dark out, it's early, and I just be quiet and I get quiet and I submit myself, submit, I surrender, I give over, I hand over just to a higher power. Maybe I say a few words that are like a prayer and, and I just get present there. Yeah. I'm a different human being. I can wake up again with that thing in the background, something's wrong, something's missing. And then it's amazing how I sit quiet and just get quiet and just see the thoughts, let them go. I get present. Something shifts so quick. It's why people use drugs to shift quick. But we're talking about creating a line of communication to yourself, to your higher power, to your God, to the creator of the universe. And in that, there's a whole new way to life, a whole new access to your life out and off of the treadmill, the hamster wheel of living. Yeah. That rote way, automaticity, stepping out of that and tapping a higher creativity and then less reactivity in life. New flow. All right, you all, thank you. We post these on YouTube as well. So if you want to see the visual, check us out at Baron Baptiste Podcast on YouTube. And David, very good, my friend. Be well. Till next time, everybody, stay well, stay blessed, stay safe, and uh, peace out. <laughs>